What is going on guys, it's Carson Game here and welcome back to Ark Survival Evolved. In today's video I am going to be covering the weapon, the new weapons and structures that were added in the latest patch 224. So first up is the magnifying glass and yes this was classed as a weapon. So the magnifying glass is somewhat unique, it tells you the particular materials you get from resources, it also shows the HP on dinos and going up to them so if you're raiding and you need to check the HP on a wall or something, it will show you how much HP each thing has. It shows you the resources you get. So from this stone, I have the potential of getting stone, flint, and metal. It doesn't say how much of each resource I'll get or what's the probability that I'll get a rare one. This turtle has 840 HP and it is full health. On bushes, it does say what type of stuff you get from it. That's all the types of berries, the seeds, fiber, and all that, etc. Okay guys, so that's pretty much the magnifying glass. It just gives you detail on what resource, it, what you get from each resource, uh, the HP on structures and dinos, and that's pretty much it. It has no other use. So it's not really that useful. If you're a pro arc player and you know all the resources you get from the current ones in game, then you obviously don't need this for that. Although it does come in handy for if you're in raiding someone's base and you need to know how much stuff you want to blow up, you can just check then. Like that, like my Terabon, Terabon here has 6,240 HP, it is level 1,557. And it is force tamed, if any of you want to know. I don't want anyone raging in the comments saying hacks or anything. It is force tamed on the single player cheats. Okay guys, so next up is the rocket launcher turret. This is somewhat similar to the minigun turret, as in its design. Uh, I guess you could say it's somewhat better than the rocket launcher, because um, if you get killed... You won't lose the rocket launcher or the ammo, so nobody will be able to take it, and this can only be damaged by explosives. Now, regarding damage, I've, got, I'm gonna, I've set up a little test area here for you to see which does the more damage out of the rocket launcher, the handheld one, or the turret. So, first up, I'm going to test it with the handheld rocket launcher. Okay, guys, so as you can see, the handheld rocket launcher did 1,034 damage to this metal wall here. I'm now going to test the same with the mountable rocket launcher here. Okay, so this is actually quite strange. The rocket launcher turret only does 985 damage. That is 49 less damage than the actual rocket launcher itself. So if you're prioritizing damage during a raid, which most people are, then I'd advise you to stick with the rocket launcher. Uh, it is a lot cheaper. The rocket price is the same for the rocket launcher turret, obviously. They don't use any different projectiles. And it does uh, more damage overall to metal structures. Now regarding fire rate, obviously with the rocket launcher you have to shoot then reload, then shoot, and it just takes some time. But with the rocket launcher turret, it does have a lot faster fire rate. As you can see, you can just constantly keep firing. Oh, no. As you can see, it's got a lot faster fire rate. If you're going to be raiding someone, you don't mind about the 49 damage de um, difference between the two, then this is going to be ideal for you. However, it is very, very expensive. Okay, so the prices on the new rocket launcher turret is quite expensive. It is four. It requires 400 polymer, 1,100 metal ingots, 300 cementing paste, and 500 electronics. This is a end game tier piece of weaponry, as you unlock it at level 90, and it does cost a lot. In my opinion, I wouldn't really say it's worth it to any of you who are thinking about getting it. It does cost a lot. It has a buffed fire rate, which is always good. But does do a lot less damage, well, not a lot less damage, but it does have a 50 damage di um, difference between the handheld one and the turret one. Okay guys, so next up is the wall mountable torch. So you can now mount torches on walls, so you don't have to have a stupid standing torch in the way of your floor all the time. And you don't have to have a torch in your hand, which is kind of annoying most of the time. So this thing does cost... Well, this thing is quite cheap, so it requires four thatch, one flint, one stone, two wood, one metal ingot, and one cementing paste. Now, that's relatively cheap for a, a torch that isn't going to get in your way and will always provide light. So, personally, myself, I wouldn't mind investing in making a few of these, and there's a stupid ant after me. Not when I'm recording a video. 
Ah, oh, God. Good job, I got a rocket launcher, eh? Problem solved. Alright guys, so I've crafted up the wall mountable torch here and placed it on this metal wall here. As you can see, it's pretty cool. It doesn't take up as much room as the standing torch does as if it was on the foundation. It would be blocking the floor and you wouldn't be able to get around. So this thing is pretty cool. I'm definitely going to invest in some of these, put them around my walls and my bases, take up a lot less room and provide a good amount of light. So yeah, that's pretty much the torches. Okay guys, so last but not least is the new underwater sea mines. These things are really awesome and they do quite a lot of damage to underwater creatures. As you can see, you can't place them too close to each other, which is which is kind of understandable considering they do a lot of damage and if they were so close to each other they'd all be locking on to the same dino at once. And when I say locking on, yes, they do actually lock on. They are homing mines. They work the same as a homing missile, really. Once a dino is in an area and aggroed on one of your structures or you, these things will lock on and go after it. So I'm going to spawn in a megalodon here. It's going to be a very low level one, but I just want it to attack me so I can show off the mines. As you can see, it's chasing it and then it blows up. So let's do that again for those of you who didn't get to see that properly. So. Here's a Megalodon, a wild Megalodon, a level 1. Now that it's attacking me, this mine will make the beeping noise and lock onto it. Like it's doing now, and then explode. Killing the Megalodon, fairly easy. Now, oh my god, there's a lot there. Let's see if it kills all three of these at once. Come on, lock on mine. No, they're killing it. They're actually eating the mine. Okay, so it doesn't seem like they work very well. It's a bit buggy how it's not targeting me now. Ah, oh, God. Oh, there we go. It just went off. One of them's still alive. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to spawn in a level 1000 Megalodon with just health on it. And I'm going to see how much damage each sea mine does to uh, dinos. So, let's give it a shot. So we're going to put this at 1000. Here's our level 1000 Megalodon. It has 19,800 HP. Obviously, I am, if I tame this and skill health on it, I won't be able to let the, get the mine to go off on me. So, I'm just going to have to hope to see that the mine doesn't do any more than 20k damage to see how much it actually does. Okay, so I'm placing the mine now. Let's see how much damage this thing does once it goes off on the shark here. Come on, mine. Broke him up. There it goes. Okay, so let's see how much damage that did. Holy crap. Oh, no, you're ruining the video, stupid dolphin. Okay, so I paused them here and the mine actually did 6,003 damage to this Megalodon, exactly 6,003. I've just calculated it now, so rounding that up, it's probably, let's just say 6k damage. So that is pretty good for these mines. You can imagine if once they introduce underwater building, which is going to be a, th uh, a thing when you can vacuum out all the water, etc. You can probably fill the surroundings of your base with with these sea mines. The good thing about them is the sharks, I don't think they naturally attack them, so they won't go off on random dinos, only tamed ones when people are trying to raid you and damage your structures and or tribe mates. Personally myself, I think these new sea mines are a really good addition to the game. So if any of you have an underwater sea cave, you know the little bay that comes with it, the actual inside of the cave that still has a bit of water, you can put a sea mine in there so once the people blew through your behemoth gates, they've got a lovely little surprise waiting for them on the other end. Anyway guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I just want to thank you all for all the likes, comments and shares on all my other videos. I really, really do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more content like this, then don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you in any way, shape or form, then don't forget to leave a like.
and I'll see you all in the next video.